Hey friends, welcome to the Sunshine Farm. It is April 23rd and we are about to go to the nursery and we're gonna bring little Malachi. We are gonna pick out a fruit tree for Mother's Day. We're gonna turn it into kind of an annual tradition. So I saw that they had pawpaws on their website, so I'm hoping they have one. Um, I'm also just curious to see what they have in general. It's kind of windy, which is a bummer because it would be such a nice evening if it wasn't, but oh well. Um, so we're gonna go ahead to the nursery. It's also my birthday tomorrow, so it kind of feels like a little early birthday celebration. And we're gonna pick up some coffee on the way back and a nice little Friday evening and we'll take you along with us. So let's get in the car, little man. Also, Chris and I are accidentally matching. We're both wearing our Yellowstone crew necks. We met in Yellowstone, so we both got these sweatshirts and we wear them a lot, but we're not often wearing them at the same time. No. What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? Look at an orange tree. <laughs> Lime tree. What do you think about the orange and the lime tree? And we got some onions and strawberries and horseradish. And we got some dahlias. It's pretty exciting. We're good now. How are you, Mr. Boo Boo? Did you have fun at the nursery? Are you so tired? Yeah. We are on our way home from the nursery. It was a very successful trip. They did not have any pawpaws in stock, but they're getting two, or they're getting a bunch on Tuesday. So we put our name down to hold for two pawpaws. So we're gonna pick those up early next week. And we got a bunch of other really fun stuff that I'm excited to show you. I'll show you guys um, a big nursery haul. I think the first time I've ever had enough stuff to show entire video of before so we'll go through everything from flowers to annuals to perennials and a couple of fruit trees you can see one of them in the back the Malachi was a little trooper he stayed pretty content and happy until we got in the car on the way home and now he's like pretty sleepy and a little fussy because it's getting close to his bedtime but it was a successful trip overall our first nursery adventure as a family and this is definitely a place we'll probably continue to go to um, fairly often because they just have such a big selection. Definitely the biggest selection of any nursery I've been to in our area. Annuals, uh, perennials, indoor plants, trees, ornamentals, fruit trees, fruit shrubs, all the things. So, and a lot of blueberry selection. So once I can start to figure out blueberries, I need to replant three high bush blueberries and figure out how to grow those well once i can figure that out i want to do a blueberry patch somewhere but i just want to make sure i know what i'm doing before i kill a bunch of blueberry plants. before i kill a bunch of blueberry plants okay i'll see you guys in a minute and i'll show you what we got We're back, I'm in the grow room and I'm gonna show you everything we got from the nursery. Junior is being a little wild, so I picked him up so he wouldn't attack the new trees that we got. Okay, so let me show you all the things we have. This room is looking so green right now, which is so exciting. Okay, so let's talk about all the things that we picked up. And there's a mix of perennials and annuals and some flower bulbs, so I don't really know where to start, but I guess we'll start with the annuals. 
I picked up this little flat of Walla Walla onions because I've never grown them before, but I wanted to try growing them and I didn't get any seeds for them this year. So even though I have a big tray of onions, which I'll show you, I really wanted to try the Walla Walla, so I picked up these guys. I also picked up celery because even though I've grown celery before um, and I grew some this year, it just takes forever to grow and these guys have a nice healthy start. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant these out in the garden because the ones I planted are not looking so hot. And then I grabbed some herbs. I grabbed lemon verbena, stevia, which is really hard to start from seed. I've never had luck starting it from seed before. Rosemary. And one of my favorites that I buy every year because I just have never bought in seeds for it, um, pineapple sage, which is an annual here. Rosemary can be a perennial if you plant it in a pot. I'm gonna do it in a grow bag this year and then I might bring it inside over the winter. And then the other annual I got was bok choy because we had it for dinner the other night and it was really yummy, but I didn't start any seeds this year and I don't, I don't even know if I have seeds for it. So I just wanted to pick some up so we could have some bok choy from the garden pretty soon. And then I got some fun perennials. The first two are two different kinds of strawberries. I was looking for varieties of strawberries that produce like a large fruit. I picked up two varieties of strawberries. One is Seascape and one is Surecrop. Seascape was known for producing large strawberries, which I was excited about. And the other one, Surecrop, was known for producing reliable, consistent strawberries. So I wanted both of those options. So I'm gonna plant these in our one of our garden beds that we're turning over from an annual bed, we're turning it into a perennial bed. So we're gonna be planting fruit trees. I just planted asparagus in that bed. Um, I'm gonna plant strawberries in that bed. And then I'm also going to be planting the horseradish that's right behind me, which leads me to the next thing we got in that same bed. So this is a cool, fun thing, horseradish. We love wasabi, we love wasabi flavored things. Um, so I thought I could make a yummy horseradish powder with this at the end of the year. And it's a perennial, so I can have it year after year. And that way we can make our own like wasabi flavored things. I know wasabi is technically a different crop, but a lot of the wasabi in the US is actually made from horseradish. So I imagine the flavor is pretty similar and I'm excited to just try it out and see, see what it's like. Okay, so let's talk about the bulbs that I picked up. One thing I'm growing a lot of this year is dahlias. I've been buying dahlia bulbs like, or dahlia tubers like crazy. I just received a shipment today of some dahlia tubers in the mail that I ordered from Etsy. Or I ordered from two different Etsy shops dahlia tubers. I ordered from a local farm in New York dahlia tubers. I ordered some dahlia tubers from fruition seeds. So I have a whole variety of dahlia tubers and I'm hoping that I can actually save a lot of the tubers this year and hopefully sell them in our own Etsy shop um, next year. So be on the lookout for that in the future. I, I love growing dahlias, they're really beautiful and as I continue to grow them more, I want to share them with, with you guys. So in light of that, I picked up two different kinds. I picked up this really pretty yellow and orange um, dinner plate dahlia called Dazzling Sun. So this is a large dahlia and I love anything yellow. Um, that reminds me of our farm and our, the name of our farm. And then I picked up these orange, orange dahlias called Prince of Orange. And then something I saw was inspired by is somebody did, showed me gladiolas that they planted. And this mixture was just really beautiful. It's called the Dazzling Tangerine Mixture. So I love like the sherbet colors, the yellows and the white. So I'm really looking forward to getting, getting these going. Um, there are two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten in here, and I don't know anything about about growing gladiolas, but I'm gonna have to figure that out and put these in our flower garden. Which leaves me to the two exciting purchases from the nursery, and I'm really excited about these because I've been wanting to grow these for a while so we got two citrus trees and i know we can't grow citrus outdoors but um about a year and a half ago 
We bought two very large indoor pots and my plan was to grow citrus in them and bring them in in the winter time. So that's what I did. I bought two um, citrus trees to go in those pots and it was just an exciting thing because I've been wanting it for so long and just hadn't taken the leap and I decided this was the best the best time we, we could do that because the pots are empty and the trees were there. So I got a Persian lime tree and a Valencia orange tree. Both are self-pollinating, so we don't have to worry about having multiples and cross-pollinating them and all of that stuff. Um, and then I'm going to be planting them in two very large pots, but first I am going to be hardening them off so they can go outside this summer. Um, I probably won't put them outside until like late May after, after Mother's Day. And then in the winter, we can just bring them in. So let me show you guys these fruit trees. This is the Valencia orange. It's got some really beautiful foliage. Um, we're gonna have to, it looks like it's leaning quite a bit, so I'm just gonna stake it until the stem grows strong enough to support it. And then I think I'm gonna have to prune it. So if you know anything about pruning citrus, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'm just gonna do some research and figure out how to prune this back so that it can support itself better. And then this is the Persian lime right here. And the fun thing about this is it already has tons of tiny fruit. Look how exciting that is. So we should have limes this year, which will be really fun. I love lime. So we've got these two trees right here. And then these are the pots that they're gonna go in, um, which need to be cleaned off, but they're like a really pretty, very large blue pot. And it should be plenty of room for these two these two guys these these pots will be plenty of room so full room in here right now 